Hi, I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org, and this is our Solar System Unit Study. We are using the book Earth and Space by Bright Ideas Press, and we have really thoroughly enjoyed this book this year uh, because of all the hands-on activities that the kids never forget. So all the information that they're learning becomes cemented deeply in their minds through those experiences. Okay, so we are learning about our solar system and uh, the planets. We did some cards on the planets. Now, when you uh, study the solar system, you will want to go to your library and try to find uh, really great books about the planets, about the sun, about the moon, and um, and go ahead and go into uh, to uh, to go stargazing out in the country. You will want a star chart, and I highly recommend this book, The Stars by H. A. Ray, which has all the constellations, making them easy to find uh, in the sky. It'll show you how to pick out constellations. And so uh, if you go outside the city, you will actually see the Milky Way on a really, really clear night. And that is, uh, our solar system is contained within the Milky Way. So that is super, super incredible. Okay, so as you are going to um, do these uh, cards, which is a uh, hands-on activity, from the book Earth and Space, um, they have us do uh, three by five cards with the different um, planets. So I thought it would be really cool to do it on black. Okay, so take a look at this activity. So what I did is I got black cardstock paper and I cut it to the size of a three by five card. Okay, and so you do that one for each a planet in our solar system. So what we did is each of my kids did a set of cards and on the back you have um, a description of that particular um, planet and on the front you draw a picture of the planet on a white sheet of paper and then cut it out after coloring it and then with a silver sharpie marker you can write the name of the planet, okay? So, for example, here's Mercury, here's Venus, let's see, Earth, that's pretty cool, that Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. You could do Pluto, Pluto's not considered a, um, a planet anymore, but you can do Pluto too if you want it. So depending on what age your kids are, they can um, write down based on what they understand of those planets. Now you are going to want uh, to look at lots of different um, books from the library about the planets so that they can research uh, each of those planets in order to know uh, something about each planet. You can also do uh, the solar system by uh, getting styrofoam balls and painting them according to the different planets and hanging them up in your room. So uh, you could do this, you can make a mobile out of it as well. Take a look at that. You can do a mobile of the solar system and um, this came from a kit, but you do not need a kit. You can just use uh, styrofoam balls and um, use a, a needle and thread to stab it and then attach it to something circular along the top. You could have maybe w stiff wire or something like that and then a string to hold it up. And so you can create a miniature solar system to hang up in in your room as well. When you are studying the stars and constellations, you can get some glow-in-the-dark stars and put them up on your ceiling in the actual configuration of the uh, constellations like the Big Dipper, Orion, and those kinds of things. Um, another activity that we did with Cub Scouts one year is to do a, a tin can um, observatory. And what you do is you get a black Sharpie marker and you write on the bottom of the can, this specific constellation. So either Big Dipper, Orion, <coughs> Cassiopeia, that kind of thing. Now what you do is you get a nail and you pound uh, through 
with the nail um, with a hammer and then you can shine a flashlight through it and see the constellation however if you want to project it onto the ceiling then you need to do it in reverse because otherwise it will be a reversed constellation so uh, I noticed this when I did it with some boys in a Cub Scout group that I was leading so um, I decided this was what I was going to do next time so what you do is you make the Big Dipper on there and then you get a push pin and stab it through each of those stars and then turn it around and mark it with pencil and then put that along the can you could tape it down and then go ahead and pound the nail through those um, holes. So here we are with the tin cans and you put the nail right over the black mark and pound the holes into it. So you could do this either way. You can do it right side up and then just shine it through and enjoy the sparks of light or you can uh, do it in reverse in order to project it onto the ceiling. Now if you're projecting it onto the ceiling you need to be pretty close to the ceiling standing on a chair in order for it to uh, look like pinpricks of light on the ceiling otherwise it becomes a large um, circle and you can't see it quite as well. So this is a really super fun activity to do with kids to learn constellations. This is what it looks like when it is finished. This is Cassiopeia. Here is the Big Dipper and here is Orion. When you are studying the Sun, uh, one of the chapters in the Earth and Space book is about the Sun and tells you all about the Sun. And the hands-on activity for that chapter is to make sun prints. Uh, take a look at this really super fun activity that takes five minutes. You will need a sun print kit which you can get uh, online anywhere. Just type in sun print kit. I got mine um, either at a hobby store or at a toy store or a teacher supply store. So I got mine from an actual place. I think it was a teacher supply store. And mine was $2.99 and it says a refill kit. So I don't, I don't know what the main kit was, but all this is is the papers and that's all that you need. You can also use um, construction paper, especially uh, cheap construction paper, but you need to leave it out for longer. Okay, so do not take it out until you are ready. You need some shapes to put on top of the paper and you will need glass to put on top of it to make sure it doesn't fly away. And actually, like the key will keep it from flying away, so that might be okay by itself. Okay, so don't take it out until you are ready because it will immediately start turning color. So, Okay, now you leave it for like an hour or something and then come back and the shadows uh, that the uh, sun is shining onto that paper are going to be dark and the rest of it is going to turn white. It's only been five minutes and um, the sun isn't super powerful right now. So if you do this in the summer, it could be even one minute. So between one and five minutes, if you have this kind of paper, um, uh, if you're using construction paper, that's when you have to put it out for several hours. Okay, so it's only been five minutes, and even with the sun not being that bright, let's take a look. Oh, oh my goodness, look oh, at that! That's Yay! Awesome. You guys, that is so funny! Don't catch look! Whoa. Sun prints, look guys. Sun prints. Look at that key. Photosensitive paper. 
You can soak them in water for one minute and then dry them on a flat surface. Basically, the imprint of the key is left on this page because of the sunshine going onto the page, uh, darkening the rest of this and leaving this uh, uh, part that is covered lighter. So this is the same way that um, suntan lotion works, actually sunblock. So if you put sunblock on you, you do not get burned as bad. So if you have one arm with a sun uh, screen and the other Without sunscreen and you go into the sun in the summer, one arm will be a lot darker. You can also make like a cross or something and see if that is true. You could do something similar to this to, um, to show how that works. Last but not least, you can also um, eat astronaut food. You can um, get these probably online. Um, it, just uh, look at freeze-dried space food. I found these at a teacher supply store years ago, and that uh, store closed, and so we got these um, as stocking stuffers last year, and I cannot remember where I got them. Maybe it was Hobby Lobby, maybe it was a toy store. So uh, those kinds of places, can um, can have these types of things. So it's freeze-dried food. So these can be a super fun uh, activity for your kids to do, pretending that they're in outer space and how do they eat uh, the food uh, that is in those pouches. Well, it's dehydrated. The water is taken out of that food. And so it's kind of fun to uh, eat astronaut food. Take a look. All right, go ahead and taste the astronaut food. And uh, is it good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very dry. Mm -hmm. Fish heads are very dry people. Is it like dried fruit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the kind from Special K. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so Special K is so if you want to um, experience freeze-dried food like astronauts, you can get it out of your Special K cereal, apparently. Here's a close-up of each of the freeze-dried foods. That one is um, strawberry and this one is chocolate. Thanks for watching our solar system unit study. See the whole uh, video set for Earth and Space. There are 12 videos here on my YouTube channel. And also there's a lot of explanation and extra behind the scenes uh, pictures and other links in my blog, susanevans.org forward slash blog. We had a great time doing these videos and showing you all about Earth and Space. Bye!